All right, thanks for having me today. I'm Colin Davidson. I'm a product manager in the reproductive health vertical. So, you know, this is expanded carrier screening for carrier seek. It's, it's um, you know, typically more than 100 uh, severe Mendelian uh, diseases that you look at in, in a single assay. So this is a I know a fairly large uh, AppySeq um, panel. One of the uh, challenges is, uh, you know, uh, perceptions, as well customer perceptions. I think there's a low perceived risk of some of these disorders. I think, uh, we're, you know, all humans are poor at, 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 you know, determining risk. But, you know, in totality, although these are mostly rare recessive or X-linked uh, diseases that we're screening, um, yeah, there are, you know, in totality quite, quite frequent. Um, and so that's, uh, one of the one of the challenges to overcome is uh, the customer perception of risk. Another is um, there's you know the very severe and um, profound uh, diseases that we are on the panel, but with the expanded, it's there's a long tail of what you know are are serious uh, diseases that um, you have to sort of draw. There's no good guidance on when, when to draw the the line and, and stop um, adding these diseases and the genes to to your panel. So. From a product development point of view, that was a challenge. And then, and this is a sequencing panel, and we're doing full coding region coverage of each gene, and so you uh, have the potential to identify a lot of variants, and many of them will be of unknown significance. And so this is a challenge informatically to, to both, our, you know, both the product and to the customers, how to deal with the, the number of variants that will come off a, a, a panel of this size. Uh, you know, from a product point of view, another challenge for expanded carrier screen is, is that new uh, disease uh, gene associations are, are coming all the time from research. So this is, um, you know, re revving the product and, you know, adapting the panel to these new, uh, new, new genes and targets and diseases is also um, will be a challenge. Geographically, we're trying to be as, as broad as possible. You know, we're, as Thermo Fisher, we're a um, global company, and this product is intended to be used by our customers around the world. So this is part of our decision-making process in terms of uh, the, the, the diseases to include in the targets. Uh, we wanted to make sure that this was relevant in Asia, Africa, and uh, Europe and North America, or the Americas. Yeah, so like this is a, a carrier seek is a complete workflow solution. So it includes uh, the panel. It's an AmphiSeq panel targeting 420 genes uh, with full uh, coding region coverage for those genes. And then we've actually spent some extra time on some of the designs for these genes. We have 33 copy number uh, specific genes that we've spent extra um, design effort for the AmphiSeq uh, amplicons so that we can do uh, single exon copy number calling on those genes. Copy number calling will be possible across all of the genes, but um, depending the number of amplicons determines the uh, robustness of the copy number calling. So it may only be several exon or, or gene level um, copy number calling that we can do. I see several things. It's comprehensive. We are, you know, as I mentioned, 420 genes that we're covering, or 418 uh, diseases. Uh, we're doing full coding, um, so we're maximizing the at-risk couple detection with both the, the full coding region coverage as well as the, the copy number calling across the, all of the genes. Um, it's efficient because of uh, the incorporation of some of these highly homologous genes into the panel and the algorithms to call uh, variants in them. Uh, we're enabling customers to eliminate parallel or sequential tests, and it's also um, it's accessible, so you get the easy adoption through the carrier reporter software, and it's flex and we offer a flexibility of supporting uh, multiple samples uh, per multiplexing per per run. Well, I think it's it's. These two products complement each other, and it's, it's a matter of philosophy. I think you know, for for customers, uh, we, you know, the NGS offers this um, the breadth of, of coverage across the genes. So you're you're going to identify uh, novel variants, um, 
Uh, whereas with a, a hotspot targeted approach of carrier scan, the content is, is fixed on, on the array. So it's, it's a matter of um, identifying the known knowns in, in this instance. So CarrierSeq has, has the sample throughput flexibility that's, that isn't uh, there in CarrierScan. So CarrierScan at, at 96 samples per run is really targeted towards larger um, reference labs, whereas CarrierSeq, you know, with, with lower, the lower throughputs, you know, potentially six, six samples per run, um, you know, is more targeted towards uh, customers that, uh, you know, have, have a lower volume or, or, or aren't, um, aren't necessarily collecting samples from larger populations.